Okay. <clears throat> All right, everyone can see me. Lighting, bro, lighting. Oh, lighting. Sorry, man. I have a limited yeah. lighting. Yes, we like you have, that. You have, an, you, you have a nice, nice place, though. <laughs> thank you, thank you. It's in the morning. <laughs> light there. Big light. Uh, yeah, it's early in the morning right now in East Coast, USA. So, I'm actually in. Um, I'm in South Korea right now. I'm in Seoul. Oh, really? Oh, nice. Yeah, never been there. So it's, but... So it's, so it's so it's night outside right oh, now. Wow, nice, nice. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay, maybe uh, we can just begin, yeah. Because I think you have a short time right now because you have to be in a meeting. Yeah, I apologize. There's a there's a product meeting that needs to be done, okay. but yeah, it's, okay. it's it's good to go though. Okay, make it quick. All right, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for being here tonight for the AMA with this amazing project, Averix Saga, which is one of the most anticipated NFT game project in Southeast Asia, as we say. And we have here tonight uh, Sean Kim. He is the co-founder and also the CMO from Averix Saga. How are you tonight, man? Welcome to Dex Capital. No, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here, everyone. And uh, yeah, I, I think. Uh, it, it, we, we try to under-promise, over-deliver, but it's very nice of you guys to say that we are the biggest uh, Southeast Asia. So I, I'm very, very proud of that. And I appreciate uh, you guys inviting me here for in a, in a, such a short time frame. Great, great. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, I think there's so much excitement from our community here about, you know, Africa Saga. I think everybody is kind of curious about the project, you know. Uh, but before we start with the AMA session, I want to remind everyone that we have a $50 giveaway tonight for five people that ask a question and be lucky enough in the draw. And also exclusive t-shirt like this <laughs> from our community here. And all right. And there will be two sessions for this AMA. Uh, first will be introduction from Sean about himself and the Aparex Saga project, and second will be the Q&A session from the audience here. Uh, all right, Jan, just to, to make it quick, uh, I'll let you to do the introduction. Go ahead, man. Great, uh, I appreciate it. Uh, hi guys, I'm Sean and I am the CMO of Aparex Saga. What we're trying to build for Aparex Saga is basically, it's very simple. We're, we're trying to build a triple A Final Fantasy Genshin Impact style game for the Web3. We've been building in stealth for over a year. We, we started our project in last year, September, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fully focused Indonesian project. And we've been here for almost a year developing. We have 40, 40 team members, uh, full-time employees. We've been uh, excited as the, one of the number one startup in tech in Asia uh, this year. Uh, from TechCrunch, Crunch Base, and Tech in Asia, and we currently we haven't shown the the full game to everyone yet. But today, for the thirty one participants here today, I, I will show a little bit of alpha on how our prototype looks like that no one's seen before. And uh, yeah, we're just really trying to build a full game. I, I don't we don't consider ourselves as an NFT game. We consider ourselves as just a regular Final Fantasy game uh, that people will enjoy. And it's actually fun to play and they will forget that it's a play to earn. But at, at one point when they're consistently trying to focus on the game, they'll realize that, oh, this is actually a play to earn. I could own money with this is something that is a small feature that we're trying to provide. But we are really trying to change the whole aspect of what AAA can be. And that's what we're trying to build. And I'm, I'm here to ensure that I could ask or understand any, any um, questions that you guys have for, for a game. Oh, nice, nice. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. 
So pretty much uh, the goal is how to make everyone have fun to play the game, but you can earn like something out of it as well, right? Correct, because the, the, really the, cool. the current the current Web3 space is, I mean, I, I don't know about you, but will you play Axie Infinity if, if it doesn't have SLP and Axie Shark tokens? I personally thought I wouldn't play it. I would rather play Mobile Legend, League of Legend, Call of Duty, FIFA mm -hmm. with my friends. But that, that was the initial moment when we realized that, oh, there's, a, there's an open market for this, where if the game is actually super fun to play, like similar to Nino Kuni, but then mm -hmm. you realize that, oh, but I could earn money with this as a secondary. It's not the priority. The yeah, game yeah. has to be really good. And if, if that is possible, there is an open market for Indonesia because Indonesia is the fourth biggest population in the world. I grew up in Jakarta, so I, I, I lived oh, in Pondok okay. Indah. So, yeah, I lived in, so I lived in Pondok Indah for a while. Uh, you know, went to Tamarangrek, out to do ice skating a long time ago with my friends. And okay. it's, there's a... There's a very big uh, need, and there's a lot of big gaming uh, gaming community, and I think Indonesia could be the next starter. And a lot of people are looking for uh, what can like they they you know people wanted to invest in Axie back in 2016, but they lost that opportunity. What if there is a AAA game that I can invest now that is super fun to play? It it, it engages the Web two gamers, not Web three, uh, because Web three the number of gamers are so small. But Web2, there's much more. That, that's the yeah. importance that a lot of gamers, a lot of Web3 projects fail to go through. And for us, it's a free-to-play as well. And how can we ensure that we could drive a super interactive Genshin Impact Final Fantasy-style 3D game that is stealth, but it's still fun to play. And that's what we're trying to build. And today, I'm actually going to show the prototype for you guys. Uh, if you're able to see my video, uh, I'll actually share it to you guys today. Oh, nice, nice special, huh? Yeah. For Dex yeah. Capital. <laughs> yeah, for Dex Capital, yeah. Nice, nice. Um, it's uh, one thing. What is the philosophy from the name of Africa Saga? Is there a meaning behind it or something that you choose, that you guys pick the name Africa Saga? <laughs> That's a good question. Saga is a, basically, it's a chronicle. It's a universe. And Averick is a, basically, you're the front line of something. Uh, we um, realized that um, Web3, like Raid Party, uh, so many people lost money in Raid Party. Phaeton Arena, they're just <laughs> uh, Crypto Unicorn, Pickaxe. Yeah. Uh, you don't play it for fun. It's just a money grabber. And yeah. we thought that what if there is just something that's the front line of a strong game, like Fortnite. Like you play Fortnite, you buy millions of dollars of skin for the yeah. fun of it. Because you want to show it to yourself. You play 50 hours of Monster Hunter or Elden Ring because you just want to, because you enjoy the campaign. What if we become the front line of the universe of Web3? And that's why Avrik Saga kind of came up as a name that we could really drive forward. And um, yeah, we've been very, very quiet about our full game. Uh, the only thing you could see in our landing page and white paper is the mini game. No one knows about the full game. Uh, but we were able to get a lot of investment from you know ygg ggg toko crypto is yeah. evil is maya group like all these east ventures like for tokopedia pintu like all these big companies because they they know how the full game looks like and yeah. they thought oh they, they could really become the next axie uh but axie is just 2d and origins is not doing well but what if there's a 3d game that i could play like genshin uh or seven chronicles or seven nights mm -hmm. And it's like, oh my God, this is so fun to play. But now like I own these assets. I think that excitement is what caused us to make that name. All right, that's cool. Well, maybe if you want to go ahead, if you want to show us something with like earlier that you said, so you're free to share the screen or something if you can. Uh, you microphone. can see my camera, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah I can see. All right, here you go, guys. So basically, uh, okay. no one. This is one of the NFTs that we have. This is the Terra Terra universe that we're, uh -huh. we're able to go in, and each of the characters are able to move, similar to Zelda Breath of the Wild. And then you could each okay. of the tags, each of the characters. Now, this is what we have been building. 
but no one knows how this looks like. That's the thing. Obviously, it's able to move around, and then you'll be able to attack all these slimes. These slimes are really cute, but basically, it, it is trying to ensure that we're developing a prototype for the 3D game that people could play around. And this, uh, there's a campaign behind it. There's a PvP, full PvP behind it, and we're we're ensuring that we get this out by uh, end of this year. But no one knows yeah. that this is in development. Uh, so. Uh, but we were able to get five million dollars from, you know, Dialect This Morning Star YGG from oh, this wow. this that we're developing, and each NFT is able to use this to roam around, do the full campaign, and uh, I I think it's everyone's is really looking forward to what we're building here. But obviously, we don't want to share it too much because the <laughs> NFT community, if uh, you know. If we build something, they, they want to see what's next. And there's yeah. a very short patience. We've been building this for almost one year on this. And I, I think that's why people will be very excited. And that's the prototype that I could at least show you a little today. And um, this is where we're driving with the tokenomic structure, with the, with the Ninokuni, Ninokuni gameplay, with the Zelda Breath of the Wild UI. And uh, with the token bonding curve, there will be a systematic way to ensure that the token prices stay stable. And I think this is, uh, we're fully prioritizing on the fun aspect of it. And I think people will really enjoy it. That's nice. I see the movement is really smooth too. Like, you know, the it's really cool, man. Can't wait for it. It's uh, it's just, uh, but this is very old. There's, there's much more yeah. advancement with, you know, things that you yeah, can ride. Yeah uh yeah. the the monsters that you have to build like you and i could play in a raid party to kill a monster together a yeti get the yeti's ear and forge that into a yeti's armor and then sell that as an nft and the, all of that aspect i think is something that we're all like really excited for okay nice now how easy does it to start like to play this athletic saga like do you need like a certain amount of character or something for playing the game i see so it's actually free to play. Our full game is going to be free to play. Uh, okay. It has to be free to play. So anyone could, uh, when the full game comes out, you'll be able to play it immediately without buying NFTs. Now, however, uh, we, so we don't consider ourselves as an NFT game. It's just a game. Uh, we don't mm -hmm. brand, we're not a NFT. We're not a P2E game. However, if you do have an NFT that you buy now, uh, it mm -hmm. aggregates in-game currency Vorten tokens already. And then when the full game launches, you'll be able to use that. That's one benefit. And second is that uh, the NFT characters are obviously stronger than the original free-to-play characters. So if you want to move to further content, like, oh, I want to go see the Shadow Dragon right now, like the Raid War, I need to be level 30. Then if I have an NFT that's a little stronger, then I'll be yeah. able to get there faster. Uh, similar to World of Warcraft, you start from zero, but level 80 is the start of everything, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so if you do free to play, you go grind a little, but you, you enjoy all the campaigns, same as NF people who have NFTs. But uh, with the NFT people, you'll be able to go a little faster into the content, and you'll be able to go through the raid wars much more faster, but it's still going to be very difficult. So I think those are the benefits that you have uh, once the full game comes out. All right, nice. So there's a male and what, female character? Female. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And, and there will be breeding aspects no on it. Correct. Correct. And uh, nice. for the people that cannot, like, let's say that, oh, can I lend something or can I lend my NFTs? That's possible. We, we have eight biggest guilds in Southeast Asia that are invested with us that we're making a platform. YGG is one of the biggest uh -huh. guilds. Uh, they're invested with us, so they have 15,000 scholars. You could be one of their scholars to play our game. Uh, wow. Second is uh, PathDAO, also one of the biggest in Southeast Asia. They have 5,000 scholars. They could also help out um, play it forward. They are Thailand's biggest uh, guild, also help out for you guys. If people, you guys are in either uh, Malaysia or let's say you're in Europe or South or in India or South America, we have Snack Club, Ola GG, Indi GG. And Avocados mm -hmm. GG, we're also working. So there's a lot of other guilds that are invested in us that you guys could use to do the lend, lend and play model as well. All right, that's cool. Exciting, exciting. 
And also, can you tell us a little bit what is your vision for you know 2022 and beyond for the project? Maybe give us hmm. you know a little bit more alpha here in Dex Capital. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, special. I, just for Dex. I, I think so. Just for Dex Capital, that prototype will show just for Dex Capital. Okay. I think that's one of the biggest alpha. Second is we have a so the the, the community is you know an NFT community is very impatient. You need to see something new every day. Uh, so waiting for one year for the full game was a long time, and that's why we developed the mini game. And the mini game is live. You could play the mini game right now. It's a, it's a very simple two D auto battler. It's not it's not crazy, and but you could you you could if you join our Discord server, you'll be able to actually get our NFTs to play the mini game. The mini game gives you a lot of rewards. Uh, if you play, I believe if you win 20 battles this season, you get 20 US dollars for free immediately. Plus, mm -hmm. you get legendary legendary weapons or armors as well for the rewards that could be used for the full game. So all, all our Discord content and our mini game content is getting you prepared early for the full game. So we have around like 1,000 people playing already so that they could get ready wow. for the full game. And uh, happy for you guys to join our Discord. Uh, Right now, next, uh, on the 15th, this Monday, we're going to have Faction War coming up. Uh, we have one of the biggest influencers from EVOS on RQ. They're also going to play it where you'll be able to use uh, different factions that lead each other to actually gain uh, some of the rewards that each of you can actually have with even one NFT. And I think uh, it, it's going to be worthwhile for you guys to speak up and then you could join the mini game so that you could prepare yourself for the full game. All right, cool, cool. Thank you, bro. Thank you for the insight. All right, just uh, we only have like ten people tonight that ready with their question. Everybody is so excited. I think. Uh, let's just start open with the first question we have. Who is that right here? We have Corrijo, uh, Corrijo Crypto Crypt Crypto Room. Hello, bang. Selamat malam. Selamat malam. Oke, okay, saya mau nanya nih, uh, kita tahu kan uh, keamanan itu penting di suatu game, apalagi gamenya gede ini nanti. Nah, mungkin abang tahu cheater maupun hacker itu uh, sangat merugikan ya. Nah, saya mau nanya nih, apakah Avarix Saga sudah memikirkan sampai ke situ? Karena game sekelas Mobile Legend, PUBG dan sebagainya itu kan uh, masih bisa loh di atas. Nah, Apakah Farik Saga nanti ini uh, bisa menghandling, merendering atau menghandle itu semua? Itu yang pertama. Terus yang kedua, uh, opsi pilihan logic uh, nanti di game aja, itu menggunakan ya. apa? Oh, satu aja. Ya udah itu aja, Bang. Ya, soalnya ini show-nya waktunya sangat singkat malam ini. Jadi biar okay, semuanya kebagian siap. dulu ya. Uh, siap. Makasih, Bang. Oke. Okay. Thank you. Alright, Sean. So, pretty much uh, the question was about the security. You know, nowadays, like, the security is very, very important, mm -hmm. especially, mm -hmm. like, Correct. For the project, you know. Uh, even a project, like, a game like Mobile Legend, PUBG, and stuff like that still can get hacked. So how prepared is FRX Saga with the security uh, concern? That's a really good question. We actually have, uh, this could get technical, but we have more than 15 nods that... Uh, This, uh, that distributes the whole keys for the private keys, so no one owns one. Um, by the way, Benchmark Axie had six, and they got hacked. We have more than 15. And all of the audit logs go through Skynet, and uh, all the third-party audits that we have been made through. So the blockchain itself is very safe. The blockchain itself just makes it a little safer, because we don't own everything. And because we're distributed among all our private keys into 10 different uh, distribution channels that are privately located, it's going to be much more safer for you guys to own your asset and distribute it. And I think that's, that's very critical for us. So no matter if, let's say, we're using AWS, the Amazon Web Services server, if that server gets compromised, we'll still have 14 other servers plus, uh, plus private keys, plus us that is able to handle the private keys uh, on the distributed channel so that we'll be able to control uh, either if one gets hacked or two gets hacked or even, even 10 gets hacked, uh, 
that we, we have a backfire of five that's able to drive forward. So it's going to be, this is the future. I, I think that that's what makes blockchain gaming so much more safer for everyone. And I think this is what we're really looking forward to. Oh, very well. Uh, so the main point is uh, you guys have like 50 nodes, which, which is Axie Infinity only have six, yeah? And then you guys use Correct. Skynet? Correct. Yeah, Skynet is one of the uh, uh, AMM, AMMs, uh, Automated Market Makers as well. We are looking, and it's just, uh, it, it, blockchain, people call it safe, but even Solana got hacked, right, with the private keys. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and people don't really think about uh, how much distribution channels they should have. And we are ensuring that we double our size on the security factors, even if we have AWS. AWS has a uh, 99.6% security rate, but we're still worried about that 0.4%. So we allocated another another whole whole knots just for that security purposes. So I don't think it's going to be a very big issue on um, getting any anyone getting hacked. Even our core team gets hacked. There's still another repository of data that is able mm -hmm. to survive itself. So I, I think it's going to be a very safe environment for everyone. Okay, thank you, man. Thank you. Gimana Kurijau bisa dimengerti apa mau dijelaskan tuh? Uh, jadi poin sedikit bang, karena saya nggak ngerti yeah. ini bahasa Inggris. Oh gitu. Oke <laughs> oke. Okay, okay. Jadi poinnya itu mereka tuh pakai 15 nodes om. Uh, jadi uh, mereka itu apa ya? Uh, merasa lebih aman gitu dengan memakai 15 nodes, sedangkan aksi Infinity itu cuma pakai Enam, enam nodes gitu. Jadi dari segi security mereka bisa dibilang lebih aman uh, dibandingkan dengan project yang lain. Dan mereka juga memakai yang namanya sistem Skynet yang mana sebuah uh, automated market maker blockchain. Uh, jadi ya intinya mereka punya nodes yang lebih banyak lah gitu. Jadi mereka bisa prepare lebih baik lagi dengan security mereka dengan sistem keamanannya itu Om, om Rizal oke okay, terima kasih banyak Bang thank you Om sama-sama terima kasih <laughs> alright next we have digital asset V13 wow, it's getting faster Om digital asset right now alright Om digital asset Go ahead with your question. Halo, selamat malam. Terima kasih atas waktunya. Uh, selamat malam. Boleh, boleh pakai bahasa Indonesia, Om? Ya, Om. Boleh, Om. Nanti saya bantu. Ya, saya. boleh, boleh. Oke, okay, oke, okay, siap. Okay. Uh, mau bertanya, ini kan uh, proyek baru ya. Uh, apakah nanti akan berkolaborasi dengan proyek-proyek yang, proyek kripto yang sudah berjalan gitu, Om? Hmm. Terima kasih. Okay, thank you. So the question was about uh, uh, partnership, like collaboration. Yeah, partnership with what, what kind of project, right? Yeah. Okay, okay. You're gonna, yeah. you guys gonna do like yeah. collaboration or something with uh, any other project that that already running right now? Yeah, pull it. Uh, we we are so we only do projects with actual games. We actual work with uh, we work we we work with big times. Uh, what is it? We work with uh, Big Times. Okay. B i g t i m e s. Big Times. Mm -hmm. It's big times? it's okay. it's one of uh, yeah. We work with Cipher. It's the biggest blockchain game in Vietnam. Uh, Cipher Cipher Search Cipherian Search. Uh, we work with uh, Azura Games, and we work with Guild of Guardians. We partner with uh, uh, Sharpnell. So. We work with Legends of Benari. These are uh, all basically real games that are trying to produce itself. For PFP project, we work with Karafuru. You know, it's Indonesian. We mind blow in. But PFP projects are kind of, I see, like more rug pull. Uh, so we, we, we <laughs> so <laughs> we try to we try to not associate with PFP projects too much. Uh, yeah, yeah, but. Okay. 
we're, we're trying to focus more on partnerships with actual gaming because okay. uh, because people might ask, oh, Sean, uh, floor price so low, like so cheap. Why is that? And uh, floor price and token price all comes later. If the game is fun, everything mm-hmm. follows. Uh, we, we, we haven't done IDEO, but we have more than $7.2 million. Why? Because uh, the institutional investors, the banks believe in us. And they gave that money so that we could work on the game. And we will do IDEO next year, early next year, Q1, 2023. So that, uh, because all games right now, rock pools, they do IDEO and then game later. But no one knows <laughs> when the game will come out. That is so, that's, that's a problem that I think is like, oh my God, that's, that's such a rock pull. So uh, we, we try to ensure that we only work with uh, partners that are super, super uh, in, uh, experts in game. Yeah. Uh, and, and, then, uh, and then those are the partnerships that we take. We took partnerships with Toko Crypto because Pang Shui Kai, CEO of Toko Crypto, is our investor. We take partnership right. with EVOS, RQ, Bigatron, Onik biggest esports team in Indonesia. We take partnership with Tokopedia. We take East Ventures, uh, Gojek, because again, their biggest web to uh, transportation and uh, e-commerce. So uh, I, I think those are the partnerships that we take. Uh, and even we're working with Janji Jiwa, the biggest uh, coffee chain in Indonesia. So that, okay. for example, later, before our full game comes out, Janji Jiwa and we will make a drink, Abrex Saga drink. And you, need to, uh, you could buy it with Toko Crypto Wallet. So we're working together. Uh, and I think we will all launch that marketing initiative uh, end of this year when our full game launches. And we're trying to just focus on the real things because there's too many rock pulls, too many projects that say that everyone will earn 5X, but that's not true. It's a, it's a, it's a incremental progress. And... We, we follow the Axie kind of style of it takes two or three years for everyone to really uh, have that strength of earning a lot of money. And I think finding that project is super difficult. But if your project is able to really drive a fundamental value, which for us is a full game, I think it works. And that's what that are the things that we're doing partnerships with. All right. Thank you. Very well, man. So the main point is you are really, really careful you know, to to pick who you <laughs> collaborate with, right? <laughs> because you know, yeah, you want to be also, you want to be sure. PFP, that, you know, yeah, don't yeah. buy PFP projects right now. <laughs> like, like uh, it, it's it's it it really comes down to because the NFT market people are not educated, so it's very difficult to find what works. I mean, if you're trying to buy today, sell tomorrow for a profit, that's okay, but that's not what we're trying to do. Uh, yes. I mean, Azuki, Azuki is down 50%. Um, PXN, I think their floor price is 0.18. They used to be wow. 3. Uh, Karafuru. I think uh, they used to be, yeah. Right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're, they're quite down. Mind blowing down. Uh, yeah. What else? Like, Moonbirds down. Uh, everything's yeah, going down. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, all PFP is going down, and because they don't have strong value to bring, and I think that's why we don't do whitelist. We actually focus on just game. That's it. Okay. And 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 for the people, we're we're trying to bring in people who loves playing games, not just money. Just if you like playing games, uh, and target audience is web two, and you like it, then then I think you guys could see that because we want to be the number one Indonesian web three number one that's really it it's nice nice oke okay. jadi begitu ya om digital asset jadi mereka sejauh ini sudah ada kolaborasi uh, mereka itu lebih memilih dengan uh, actual games seperti big times uh, cyber asura uh, guild guardian terus ada karakuru juga terus mereka juga partnership dengan toko crypto uh, kebetulan uh, CEO nya adalah investor dari mereka juga, jadi mereka sangat berhati-hati lah uh, memilih kolaborasi untuk menjaga agar tidak berkolaborasi dengan proyek yang rakpo gitu om, digital asset dan mereka okay. juga radio next year 
Thank you, Om Digital Asset. All right, next we have uh, Iwan Pepo. Mr. Iwan. Hello. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, my question is about mechanism, reports and burning. You have this mechanism to increase value of uh, coin from Avarik Saga. Yeah? All right. Thank you. Sean, hello. All right. So you, you asked about the burning utility. We have five on, on the burning utility side. We have one is levels that you, every character has to level up. You need to spend a little bit of in-game currency. Two is skills. Three is weapons and armor forging. Three, uh, four is breeding. And fifth is actually leveling up the skill tree. Now, uh, burning utility is not enough. Why? Mm -hmm. Is because uh, you, you need a centralized way to control the inflation. And for us, we, we are actually taking a centralized approach, not DeFi, centralized. Um, and why we're doing that is because no matter how much utility you have to burn, people won't mm -hmm. just burn it. They will sell. Scholars don't help. Scholars also will sell because yeah. they want profit. Hence, what's happening is that... Uh, and th this goes off context. If uh, we are at Majaputu, you want to translate right now? It's okay because right I have yeah, because yeah, I can yeah, explain, I can a, little explain a little more. Okay. Uh, bisa dimengerti? Om, berarti Omi One, jauh ini? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sen. Okay. Uh, he still can understand it. You can go ahead. Okay. Okay. Because the problem is that. There, there are three generations in Web3 gaming, okay? Three generations. One is uh, the Bitcoin of gaming is Axie. Axie had double token model. Uh, In-game currency is called SLP. And second is called Ab uh, Axie Shard. Now, the only thing you could do with SLP is breed. However, if you want to breed, you need to spend Axie Shards. So what happens mm -hmm. is, uh, okay... Uh, there's so much people playing the game that Axie Shard price goes up. Then breeding price goes up. Then I realize, ah, I don't want to breed anymore because the cost to me profiting is too high. So I don't yes. breed. Then if no one breeds, everyone just builds up SLP. If too much SLP supply, then SLP price goes down. Oh, yeah. If then no one breeds, then Axie Shard price goes down then there is no utility, no one burns, then every economy goes down. That's what happened to Axie. That's first generation. So second generation, what's second? Second is Dayton Arena. Dayton Arena said, ah, okay, to solve this problem, what if we make more utility in in-game currency? Rather than just one, breeding, we could do levels, skill sets, and everything. So they said, okay, we have level up, we have upgrades we have forging we have selling but the problem is web3 gamers there's only 1000 or 2000 gamers uh compared to the whole unity so what happens is no one no one uses the utility everyone just sell because the game is not fun so <laughs> they, everyone and scholars don't help scholar also sell but everyone just sells price goes down it goes to shit. So third generation, what did Avrik Saga think is, ah, okay. So utility is important. Yes, we need burn, like level up. That's what we did. But however, second is the in-game currency cannot be infinite. It has to be capped. Meaning uh, there is limit on how much, how much in-game currency can be distributed so that okay. it's centralized and we can control how much rewards goes out to the players. That's very important because state in arena actually cannot control it. The more users come in, SLP and THC goes up. But if we're able to control through that token bonding curve, it's a model, TBC, you can search it in Google. It, it helps us to actually control how much reward goes to players so that even if the player number grows, we can control the amount of in-game currency that gets in 
based on how much it gets burned. That's the mechanism that we're using. Plus, we're also using a lot uh, similar to the Chinese government. If there is very, very, uh, it, it's very difficult to sell it and also buy it, meaning that there's high tax so that the user will rather invest in the game to earn higher rewards rather than sell immediately. Those are kind of the mechanism that we're trying to put in to ensure that Average Saga has a very stable economy. Okay, very well, very well. Um, uh, Mr. Iwan? I hope that answers your question. Hey. Okay, Mr. Iwan? So much, it? So. I think it's very clear, yeah? All right, thank you. So next we have Kang Borong. What's up, bro? How are you? Kang Borong. Hello, selamat malam, Bli. Selamat malam, good evening, sir. How are you? Nah, selamat malam. Ya. Oke, pertanyaan saya nih, Bli. Jadi gini, yeah. apa Riksaka kan? Game yang berbasis hmm. blockchain nih. Pertanyaan hmm. saya adalah apa sih keuntungan-keuntungan yang diberikan Afrik Saga terhadap pemain yang memainkan game ini? Dan apakah hmm. Afrik Saga akan mengadakan event airdrop untuk mempromosikan hmm. gamenya? Hmm. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So, I don't know if you understand, Sean, but uh, the question, the main question is uh, what's the benefit from the Afrik Saga? Uh, yeah, with the NFT and with what kind of does it does airdrop or promotions? Yeah. Yeah, and you guys do an airdrop as well. Yeah, yeah. No, okay. Uh, we we so our project is one year old. So we sold out our NFTs in last year September. Sold out in wow. in one hour, one hour. Uh, one hour. We, we had yeah yeah September twenty seventh. Uh, and we, we 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 did our airdrop. Now now the. The basic benefit right now, if if you buy our NFTs, you'll be able to get airdrop three uh, Vortem tokens, our in-game currency per day. So three Vortem per day, if you have one in, one NFT. So if you have 10 NFT, you get 30 Vortem tokens per day. I have 30, 35,000 already. Uh, wow. So, yeah. <laughs> so... When the game launches, I, I can't wait to level up my characters with that 35,000. I think that's the biggest benefit. Uh, it, we use a hold to earn, so there's no gas. Zero gas. Uh, you don't zero need to gas. pay anything. Yeah, zero gas. Uh, you, you have our NFTs, and then our full game launches, you'll be able to claim our Vortem tokens for free. Zero gas. And you'll be able to use that to level up your characters, forge your armors and weapons, and then play the game so you could go into, uh, so you could be stronger than anyone else who didn't buy their NFTs for their Vortem tokens at that point. All right. Okay, very well. So you can level up with all those things, yeah? On the yeah, game. so it's good, it's, it's good to aggregate it now. Correct. Yeah. Wow, September last year in one hour. That's really amazing, man. Sorry, three Vortems in 24 hours. Three Vortems. In four, yeah, 24 in, hours. In one day. Yeah, in one day. Alright, jadi begitu ya Om Kang Borong. Jadi, uh, benefitnya itu uh, kalau main game ini uh, dengan dapat reward for uh, time itu bisa pakai level up di, di in-game-nya itu Om. Dan mereka tahun lalu uh, bulan September itu sudah ngeluarin NFT mereka yang mana sold out dalam waktu satu jam dimana kalau sekarang Om Kang Borong membeli satu NFT mereka itu uh, bisa dapat airdrop 3 for time yang mana token mereka itu uh, dalam waktu 24 jam dan itu juga bisa didapatkan dengan gratis dengan zero gas itu kira-kira Om Kang Borong Oke, terima kasih ya, Beli. Sama-sama, Om. 43, oke. Okay, next, we have, uh, let's speed it up. Rido Punjabi. Silakan, Om. Halo, Om Rido. 
Rey de Putra Dharma Yasa. Halo. Oke, okay, kalau enggak saya next saja ya untuk mempersingkat waktu. Halo Om, Mata udah tangan itu Om. Mana dia? Om, re- belum di redonya angkat tangan kan. Oh, belum dibuka sama Rizky. Iya, belum dibuka itu. Oke. Okay. Alright. Oke, okay, selamat malam Om. Selamat malam, good evening. Jadi, oh, yeah. di sini saya mau nanya tentang cheat ya Om. Jadi kan orang yang menggunakan cheat itu pasti nggak diinginin nama ini kan yang punya projectnya apa yang punya gamenya gitu. Karena cheat hmm. itu kan pasti curang sih. Nah, dan pertanyaan saya adalah bagaimana cara Anda menangani orang yang menggunakan cheat saat bermain game gitu. Oke. Okay. So, basically the question is how do you prevent people from cheating, you know? Ah, the game. I see, yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes, you know, they, they can cheat, like, you know, people that knows about IT and stuff, especially the game. They always find a way to, to cheat the game, the system. I see. Oh, the the cheating, cheating prospect is a very, very good question. I think this is it's a, it's a brilliant question that we have. Uh, there are around um, three forms of cheating. One is copying items. Two copying is items. Uh, basically you are able to uh, farm. You, you have you have bots to farm a certain aspect, and and three is you'll be able to uh, edit edit the 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 skill set or edit the stats. One and three, so so one and three is edit editing something or copying. Due to blockchain, it's impossible. We, we, that, that's the amazing part. We are able to block that using the blockchain space. The metadata is inside your character. You cannot change it because the blockchain itself is uh, decentralized. You, you cannot change it. So that is a basically very safe opportunity for us to hop. The problem is farming. I'm not going to use my second finger because it's a fuck you. So I use my... So the, the second second is farming the farming aspect we actually do uh ensure that if, if you're trying to build it up there is a level of how much you can farm per day there's a limit and i, I think that helps out that be yeah 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 and because you could there's a limit to how much per wallet can actually farm per day we could actually actually calculate uh, the full number of resources per user And if the user is hiking up too much per day, we're able to immediately see if it's too much or not. And then we could immediately ban them. And I think that's one of the space specific feature that we're able to do uh, to ensure that no one can cheat. But I, I think okay. Web3, the blockchain itself, just is very helpful. Yeah. Okay, jadi ada tiga aspek ya, Om. Uh, tentang cheating itu ada bisa mengcopy item, Terus ada farming, and then what was the third one again, Sean? The third aspect uh, is 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 editing the stat. Oh yeah, uh, editing uh, stepnya gitu. Jadi yang pertama dan yang ketiga itu ya bisalah ditanggulangi. Dan yang kedua ini yang agak riskan, yang mana uh, farmingnya itu. Tapi mereka sudah mana ya membatasi. Uh, jumlah uh, item yang bisa di farming per day. Jadi kalau ada yang melebihi limit yang sudah mereka tentukan itu, mereka akan bisa men-trigger untuk men-stop uh, dari farmingnya itu sendiri. Itu sih kira-kira Om siapa tadi? Om Rido. Oke, mantap Om. Thank you Om, thank you. All right, next we have uh, Mbak Tatas. Okay, hello. Hello, hello. Sis, sis, Tatas. Tatas. Uh, aku pakai bahasa Indonesia ya, Pak. Indonesia, oke. Ya, oke, oke. Oke, oke. Boleh, boleh. Oleh project Anda yang tidak sama sekali dimiliki oleh project-project lainnya. Dan selanjutnya, uh, langkah apa yang akan dilakukan dalam waktu dekat ini? Terima kasih. 
All right. Okay. So the question was about what that differentiate Athletic Saga from any other project at the moment, and what is your like uh, mm -hmm. the closest goal from Athletic Saga? I guess talking about okay. the roadmap, uh, or something. The the first unique value proposition is that uh, we're, we're prioritizing everything on the game, everything. Um, we spend more than $3 million in just the game. $3 million okay. US dollar. Uh, we hired EA, EA Sports Team. Oh, yeah? EA we Sports. Hired, yeah, we hired Riot, the maker of uh, Valorant and League of Legends. We hired uh, the, the lore team, the story writer from Marvel, the developer of Iron Man. We, we hired uh, also lore writer from Batman, Batman writer and uh -huh. we, we spend this much money because we, we focus on just the game that, that's it uh, people in, in web 3 thinks that oh if token price goes up everything is okay game is shitty like wolf game wizards raid party everything is okay because token price is up but they, the game will die in three, three months we realize that that's not, that's not what we want to do so we spend so much of our money in making sure that we have a team that could build up a 3D, as you saw in our prototype, a good game. And that's what we're prioritizing. And that's the unique value proposition because Web3 games cannot make AAA. That, that's clear. And that's what we're developing so that once in four or five years that you guys invested in us, either Riot Games, Activision, Blizzard could buy us out or we actually be become one of the biggest Web3 game studio. That's the biggest unique value proposition. Our roadmap right now is we're gonna we're gonna launch a closed alpha for Dex Capital, for uh, Crypto ID, for uh, for the Indonesian community uh, in end of this year, so December. And I think you guys will be able to play it and demo it. And I think that's the biggest alpha that we have. And second is our mini game Faction War is coming out this Monday, so in three days. And I think you'll be able to kind of uh, get your rewards early so that you could get ready for the full game. All right, very well, thank you. Uh, gimana Mbak Tata bisa dimengerti apa perlu saya jelaskan sedikit poinnya? Halo Mbak Tata. Mbak Tata. Oke, okay, jadi intinya, uh, Avarik Saga ini udah spend about what, 3 million uh, dalam developing game-nya. Yeah. Uh, dan mereka ini punya triple A team juga ya, behind uh, Avarik Saga ada eSport, ada orang dari Riot, uh, Lord Team, dan segala macam. Dan tentu ini yang membuat mereka ini berbeda dengan proyek Uh, project project game yang lainnya dan kemudian untuk uh, event terdekat itu ada gini akhir tahun ini mereka bakal ngadain close alpha uh, di bulan Desember dan kemudian hari Senin depan mereka juga bakal ada sesuatu uh, coming soon juga event yang bakal segera mereka eksekusi juga. Jadi kira-kira begitu Mbak Tatas. Oke, cukup. Terima kasih. Sama-sama. Oke, okay, next we have Bro Henry. Oke, okay, oke. Okay. Have more minutes. Let, let's speed it up a little bit. Okay. Where did you get the idea to build the Afarik Saga game? Oke, okay. where did you get? What was it? Where did you get? Where, yeah, I, I, where, where did you get what? Can you to build the Afarik Saga? To build the Afarik Saga? I you mean to build? I did, I did. I oh, did the to idea. build the Afarik Saga. Oh. Where, where's the I idea come uh... from to, to build this Afarik Saga? Ah, okay. That's a good question. Um, 
so the founders used to play uh i i i we, we bought our first game in plaza sinayan in jakarta it's called plaza final Sinai. fantasy Ta- yeah final fantasy tactics it was one game it, it's a it's a rpg game and we thought that that was super super fun but uh-huh. and then more and more games came to come out like new rpg games and new and the ragnarok was like big big in jakarta long time ago yeah. and we thought that oh my god this is something that people want to play and then we all became 30 i'm i'm 31 by the way and you know you know people get old and we we still <laughs> miss that we, we miss that nostalgic uh oh, i remember playing ragnarok all day or we miss final fantasy all day and this is why we want to build that but in 3d so that everyone's like so that new generation mz generation could also play but old generation like me could also play and this is why we wanted to build that 3d uh final fantasy style genshin game for uh web3 okay nice so everything started in indonesia huh? the idea yeah yeah <laughs> plaza sanayan man that's no like not to satu satu plaza sanayan satu man okay okay so that's not jelas yeah uh bro henry i think it's, uh, it's very clear Okay, next we have uh, Joseph Willis. Go ahead, bro Joseph Willis. Terima kasih, Bang Putu, uh, untuk uh, kesempatannya. Untuk yes, um, beasiswa yang ditawarkan Avarik Sagas, seberapa menariknya agar uh, banyak peminatnya dari para gamers di dunia ini? Terima kasih, Bang Putu. Okay, thank you, sir. All right, Sean, so how do you attract uh for this uh scholarship people you know to to want to play the Afarix saga is there any strategy you know to attract the player i see the 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 basic way to actually start out with uh the scholarship is either join YGG uh mm. SCA so YGGC discord path out discord GGG Yeah, YGGC under Irene because Indonesia is under YGGC. Uh, there is PATHAO, uh, P-A-T-H-D-A-O. There is Good Games Guild, GGG. There is uh, Play It Forward, Thailand Guild, Play, uh, P-L-A-Y-I-T-F-O-W-A-R-D. And then uh, I think those four are more in Southeast Asia. I think that will help you get more of the platform because... Uh, but I, I personally ad- advertise YGGC because there's a lot of scholars that could help you in Indonesia to get in uh, involved with that for Exaka. Okay, thank you. So pretty much, you guys make it as as easy as you can to you know for the scholarship people to join the all these four uh, guild games for Afarik Saga. Correct. 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 Okay. Thank you. Uh, jadi gitu Om Joseph. Jadi uh, mereka bikin segampang mungkin, se- segampang mungkin untuk bisa memulai bermain game Avarik Saga ini uh, melalui beasiswa yang bisa disediakan dengan empat. Uh, guild yang tadi ya ada YGGC ada Triple G ada Pakdao dan siapa lagi satu tadi lupa saya jadi itu Om Joseph ya terima kasih Mas. bisa terima kasih, ya bisa join discordnya tapi yang mereka rekomend si uh, YGGC jadi bisa join discordnya YGGC alright next ada Ega Dharma halo selamat malam beli putu selamat malam bro Halo, mau nanya, uh, ini kan uh, proyeknya Play to Earn, apakah nanti uh, game ini bisa dimainkan secara gratis atau memerlukan apa tuh, NFT-nya atau item tertentu untuk memainkannya? Oke, okay, terima kasih. Thank you. Alright, so you need the NFT to play the game or is it free without the NFT? Just, you know, you can start a game already or what? It's free to play, fully free to play. You could free the. You could. You don't need anything. Uh, you just need uh, your email to actually access the account with the wallet to play the game. That is all you need. 
uh, it, for the full game. For, uh, for the mini game, you do need your wallet and an NFT, but uh, I highly recommend buying an NFT now so that you could get three Vortem tokens per day so that you could get ready for the full game to come out so that you could use that Vortem you aggregated to invest uh, so that you could get higher rewards. Okay, thank you. Jadi, uh, free to play ya, bro Ega. Uh, free to play, tidak perlu beli NFT, uh, tidak perlu wallet, tapi kalau mau main mini game-nya, disarankan buat uh, untuk punya wallet, dan disarankan buat beli NFT-nya juga sekarang, karena dengan membeli NFT itu, uh, kita punya kesempatan buat dapat 3 Fortem token per hari. Jadi, begitu game-nya launching, uh, sudah punya banyak token untuk bisa membeli semua aksesoris yang ada di Avarex Saga. Itu, bro. Oke, okay, terima kasih, Bli. Oke, okay. cukup-cukup. You're welcome, bro. Thanks. So, next, the last one, we have uh, John. Kang Chuan, sir, go ahead. Last question. Because Sean it got to go to the meeting after this one. Kancuan. Ya, halo, selamat malam, beli putu. Malam malam, good evening, sir. Rakan om. Halo, Kancuan. Kancuan. Mic-nya om. Halo. Ya. Oke, okay, silakan Om untuk mempersingkat waktu. Kedengeran Om, kedengeran. Ya, yeah, kedengeran Om. Yes. Uh, my question is what pla- what plan does the project have to entice traditional gamer to the blockchain gaming market because at present uh, the blockchain game model is still too new to reach user. Beside yep, yep. Beside the graphic and game content are not attractive. How will your project overcome this situation and what extra feature will you offer to attract the gamer from another platform? Thank you. I see. All right. That, that's Thank a good you. question. Uh, the, the question, basically, blockchain gaming sucks because they don't invest in the game. Uh, in order to build a AAA game, you need over three to four million dollars. Just invest in the game. That's it just in the game, not liquidity pool, not tokenomics, just in game, you need around four to five million. And that's why they're not able to do it. Our unique value proposition is that we do have the money and we're pouring in with EA for Riot, with Pottermore, with Activision on the games and Microsoft games as well. That Those are the people that we hire to make the game good. If the game is good, uh, Web2 gamers will come. If the Web2 gamers come, Web3 gamers will come. Web3 gamers come, token people will come. Token people come, NFT people will come. That, then it becomes a flywheel. I think that's what we're, we have the unique value proposition on. And we have a huge amount of money invested in uh, making a really good game. You saw our prototype. I think you mm-hmm. haven't seen that prototype compared to any other games, Web3 out there. And I think that's what we're trying to do. And that, I think that will be the most biggest uh, changer in a- any competition that you guys are seeing. All right, very well. Thank you, man. Gimana, Om? Uh, everything is clear, yeah, I think. Ya, Om, ya, Om. Jelas semua, Om. Terima kasih, Om, beli itu. Yes, thank you. Go, Kang Chuan. All right, that's wrap up everything. That was the last question. Well, thank you so much, guys. Uh, I love all the questions tonight. So much energy and enthusiasm from the community about Aparex Saga. What do you think, man? It's very good. No, it, it, it's, it's been very nice. And the questions have been very, very, um, very, very unique. Uh, I, I do have our marketing manager inside uh, to answer any, any questions as well. So I, I think he can answer any questions, even if I'm not here. So yeah, he could, he could also open the stage. He's, uh, I'll be, I, I believe he's Alvin Timotheus inside here. All right. Uh, very well. Uh, thank you so much, Sean, for joining the AMA tonight in our community. Uh, we wish you and the team the best with the project. 
And also, thank you everyone for being here tonight. You guys are awesome. Therefore, I will end our AMA tonight with Afarik Saga. We'll see you guys in the next AMA. Bye bye and good luck with the meeting, Sean. All right, thank you. I'll see you guys in our Discord channel, discord.gg.avarikSaga. I'll see you there. All right, okay, bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>